Hello and welcome to Kakafaina channel, my name is Loma and let's start with pandemonium. I will be mentioning polishes in the rainbow order and not in the order I like them because this is a top 10 and I am not sure I could choose so well between these shades. So pandemonium is a red lacquer filled with color shifting red to orange micro flakies from the underworld set fully opaque in two coats. This is my favorite red in my collection of like five reds, crazy I know, it is super bright and very beautiful on all of these or warm skin tone since it does have that burning hot orange shift to it. I love how pandemonium is almost one coater, a very beautiful formula glides like butter on the nails. Removal is not too difficult nor problematic at all. I feel like this is the kind of red nail polish a main character would wear because it is so bright and very eye-catching. I remember someone said there is a perfect red lipstick shade for every woman and I have to say pandemonium is that red lipstick every woman should have, but in a nail polish. Not sponsored by Mooncat just yet, just a genuine fan. By the way, my husband really loves pandemonium as well, he picked it for me to wear on his birthday. So if you don't have a mate just yet, you might want to consider wearing pandemonium on occasion to mesmerize and attract some males. Does it work on females though? I have no idea. One of your friends will have to tell us that after you try it. Next up we have Flight of the Monarchs. It is an orange lacquer filled with color shifting orange to amber to pink to purple shimmer from Lost in a Folktale set, almost fully opaque in three coats. It was in my yearly mostly underrated polishes back in January and now I see on Mooncat's site it is a bestseller as it should have been a long time ago. I like to call this shade liquid gold because this is exactly what it is. The OGs know that I love that magical gold shimmer and I'm always surprised that Mooncat doesn't use it in everything they make, like in their occasional spontaneously exploding bottles. Just kidding, Mooncat said they will replace the bottles and I trust them they actually did, so stop the hateful comments on Mooncat on my account. They are doing their best and mistakes happen, okay, for some of us more than others and this sounds like a slight shade but I assure you it's not since I myself fail to do the most basic stuff all the time, so I am definitely not the one to judge. But also, I want to remind everyone that typically I am a hater of oranges and I decluttered all oranges I ever had, but Flight of the Monarchs is an exception to my no orange rule, simply because it doesn't feel like orange that much to me mentally. I am thinking it's because of that gold shimmer and the combination of the purple jelly base. It's that's why this shade feels so homey but also bougie. The formula of Flight of the Monarchs feels rather thin, but again, it has a very good coverage in three coats and has no issues. Removal also is very easy and non problematic. Naturally, I had to add in some fake halo. It is a rose gold linear holographic lacquer, fully opaque in two coats. I personally failed to see the rose goldness on it and it leans towards orange next to my orange of his skin tone, but it is a wonderful new to wear regardless. Also a bestseller and for a good reason. It has the hollowest linear hollow I have ever encountered in this nude-like base shade. Whew, that was a mouthful. Just a reminder that the hollow will not be seen that much when overcast, but it is blinding under the sun or under my kitchen hood lamp as well. How they made a kitchen hood lamp better than my studio lights that cost me a fortune I don't know. Perhaps we have a lamp wizard in the comments who could explain this weird magic to me, because it is definitely not a science, I'm sure of that. The formula of the polish is on the thinner side, but I personally had no problems with application nor with the removal. The Trouble with Immortality is a bronze metallic lacquer from the Seasons of Persephone set, fully opaque in two coats. I feel like this shade is going on my list of the most underrated nail polish 
brushes simply because of its crazy unreal twinkle. I know the color itself may not be everyone's cup of tea, but honestly, I would still recommend trying the polish out. In fact, I actually need a new bottle of it because I used one up already and I am going to repurchase it as soon as I can because it is gorgeous for nail art as well as wearing it alone. The formula seems to be very close to perfect and the removal is not difficult whatsoever. What is difficult is to read those ginormous sentences that I wrote for myself because apparently I want myself to suffer. Many people will disagree with this one, but another must-have according to me is Prickly Pear. It is a matte cactus green lacquer filled with color-shifting orange, pink and yellow iridescent flakies and it is from the Midnight Rodeo set, fully opaque in three coats. Now, for those of you who don't like green in general, of course skip this one, however, I still highly recommend the shade simply because of its uniqueness. As a world's first green color expert, I can assure you, no green nail polish collection is fully completed without prickly pear on the shelf nearby, or a drawer, or a box, or a coffin, wherever you keep your most prized possessions, honestly, I don't judge. The formula is rather sheer since it is in a jelly base, yet the removal will not be difficult. The stranger is an olive green creme lacquer from the tail of five lacquer set, fully opaque in two coats. If from this entire video you can get only one nail polish, I highly recommend getting the stranger. This polish was in fact what made me order from Munket for the very first time and I never looked back at the mainstream nail polishes ever again. Munket's quick drying formula is by far much more satisfying to wear than let's say <coughs> OPI. <coughs> Furthermore, I can gladly say that the stranger is my most worn green and most worn polish of all time. Wearing it just makes my heart happy and my green goblin of a brain well fed as well. The formula is very buttery and removal is very simple as well. Axis the Night is a black lacquer filled with green shimmer from the glitch in the Matrix collection, fully opaque in three coats. Axis the Night has this delicate yet impactful green twinkle to it and it is in a jelly black base so the entire polish looks even more dimensional, multi-dimensional even. I love the size of the shimmer so much, it's so fine yet makes an entire nail polish to stand out from the crowd in the sea of polishes we have today. While we can find something similar to Fig Halo, Axis Denied seems to be the only one of its quality on the market. Speaking of quality, frankly the polish quality of formula in a sense of applying isn't the best. You have to fight it for a bit to make it fully opaque, but once you apply three coats it looks wonderful. Since it is a black based nail polish, the removal might be a bit messy, especially if you don't have a quality nail polish remover, but it's not as crazy as as glitters or tiny flakies, or me, that's for sure. House of Hades is a deep blue purple lacquer packed with cobalt ultra fine flakies from the Underworld set, fully opaque in four thin coats. Yes, you heard me right, a four coater nail polish in a must haves video. I mean, have you even seen House of Hades? It is so bright that in some angles it slightly burns my retinas, and that's an immediate yes for me. I personally love blue polishes, but House of Hades is the next level of blue, you guys, I swear. Whenever I wear it on my nails, I am always so excited. However, the formula is a mess and that's why I recommend four thin coats, simply because it looks a bit patchy in three, in my opinion. The removal is not very difficult though and the serotonin it gives when wearing it is worth it. Catfished is an ocean blue lacquer jam-packed with blue ultra-fine flakies and super micro holographic glitter from the mermaid tail set almost fully opaque in three coats. She is lovely on her own and as a topper just ask Linry here on YouTube and she will say the same. The sparkle and shine of catfish is honestly perfect to wear on every season and I do wear this polish all the time. The formula is on the thinner side but is very workable and removal of it will be quite a pain in a place where the sun doesn't shine as we say in Lithuania. 
not gonna lie. The flakies just stick to the nails and skin, so you'll have to work extra to remove this one. Mermaid Bait is a turquoise lacquer filled with extra shifty, super chromey shimmer that shifts dramatically from pink to gold to lime green, giving this shade a baby blue appearance in the sun and a greener appearance in the shade, fully opaque in 2 to 3 coats. This is indeed the shiftiest polish to ever walk the surface of the earth. Well, nail polishes don't have legs, but you know what I mean. Mermaid Bait is one of these polishes that look good under any lighting, and you don't need any specific conditions whatsoever. So if you live where the sun doesn't shine, and I'm not talking about the other end this time, well, I believe you must acquire this beauty. The formula is a bit thinner than usual, but the removal is non-problematic at all, so there is that. And I also wanted to include some extra polishes that didn't fit in the top 10, but still would highly recommend purchasing them regardless. Plankton is one of my favorite greens to wear, and if this was a top 10 of greens, it would be even in the top 5. Garden of Evil, again, such a gorgeous shade with outstanding purple shimmer in it. Queen of the Dead, even though a thermal and can diet you at any time, this beautiful blood red shade is a must-have in my opinion simply because of its thermaliness, but be careful, it stains the nails red. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe, bye!